Ooh, let me remember all my updates. I don't know. I gotta remember them all. Hmm. I know three of the updates. Maybe I'll save some for one. Okay. And some for this one. Just yeah. so we have updates for both. I'll just say the same two things that I know. You should do your updates first because then maybe they're overlapping updates. Okay. We're already live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just over here just yawning. That's all right. Okay. Okay. Uh, welcome back to the podcast. Um, so mine's a, so mine's an update on, do you know? Probably rust. Yes. Did you see anything? Uh, that was one of the ones I wanted to bring up. I okay, saw, so let's just talk about it you first. should talk about it first. Tell me what you know. Not a lot, but, uh, I did see that. He said he didn't pull the trigger, but he pulled the hand hammer. I texted you. I was like, what is this shit? Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, which I just thought was, uh, I don't know if funny is the right word, but like you you fired the gun. Yeah. It doesn't matter how you fired it. You fired it. And he was so, well, I, I, I did not pull the trigger. Yeah. The trigger the, was not pulled by me. I, I feel like either him and his ego or his lawyers figured out like, Hey, let's say you didn't pull the trigger. Yes. Or something. That's exactly what it was. It's he's gonna use it somehow or another. Yeah. I mean, you you fired the gun. That's like if I if I no, I didn't stab her like this. I stabbed her like this. <laughs> That's exactly what <laughs> it's it like, is. Oh, so your finger was up here instead of here? Yeah. Also, um, so I watched a video. Actually, there was I I clicked on a video and they were like, here's why Alec Baldwin is lying. And I was like, oh, let me click on this. And I clicked on that. Then there was another one that was with the same subject. And I was like, all right, this one looks a little more. But they had replicas of the gun. Uh -huh. And they were like, if you click it back, it stays back. Like, Because I think he – I didn't see the whole thing, but he was making it sound like all I did was, like, push it back. Mm -hmm. And then it just went. But they're saying, like, if you click it back, it it's actually the single – Single bolt mean uh so single action, it it likes it it doesn't just go. You have to pull the trigger for you it to go. You have to pull the trigger. He's so dumb. I mean there's like, so there's the, gun experts out there. So like do you know what single action is? No, I have no idea about anything like that. So I don't know the exact, but like so if you if you pull the gun, mm -hmm. the hammer goes back and then boom. Mm. Single action, you pull the hammer back. Mm -hmm. So now the trigger. Is automatically halfway closer. Oh. So if you have it, so if you have it on single act, you can pull the trigger quicker, which means you can fire two bullets quicker. Mm. Okay. So so when you pull it back, it stays. Yeah. So he's an idiot for using this, or his defense, or his yeah, lawyers are. And apparently, like the DA was pissed and shit. Oh, why was the DA pissed? I totally just because like you went on air and is like you're. I, I I don't know. I didn't see why. I don't know the exact reason, but I'm assuming like. Like we didn't bring any charges to you. You're going on saying saying stuff about the case. Oh, just like the reason, like a like a cop would like detectives would hold some information. It's like you're saying all this stuff. Probably you're like leaving us no choice. Now we have to do extra work, or now we have to charge you. Yeah, fucking idiot. Wow, that's what did so you wild. Say about Ross? That was it. I was going to talk about how he said that he didn't pull the trigger. That was pretty much it. I knew you were going to know more, so that's why I was going to leave it up to you. It was just a talking point, let's say. Okay. Wait, you know what else we didn't update? Well, we found an update on, and I don't think we talked about it on here. Gabby Petito? Yes. What was the update that he... That Brian Laundry shot himself. Yes. Because I was hoping <laughs> it was alligators. That I was really hoping that was... he was trying to escape, and he had like this little like four, and then an alligator came up, and he was like, not today, motherfucker. You're gone. I was hoping it was the well. Oh, the well. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if he was like on the run and they he got stuck in a well? Yes. He welled himself. He welled himself. He pretty much did well himself on that. 
Everglades. I'm not saying there's a reason to like murder someone or do whatever these crimes, but like what what is the point of He could have just broken up with her. What is the point of if the if the whole thing's going to end with you killing yourself? What what is the point of anything? I just I don't it's unfathomable because we're not killers. So we can't we don't know what that's I don't know. Like. I would kill someone in the well. In the well. Well only. <laughs> like Spartan. This is Sparta. Kick him right into the well. Yeah. This is Sparta. <laughs> I've never even seen that movie, but I'm pretty sure. That's, what? I'm pretty sure. There's so many movies you haven't seen. I'm pretty sure I'm that's shocked. the cadence. That's exactly what it is. That's I'm the just the messenger. Doesn't he say something? I feel like I've seen that scene. Scene's amazing. The whole movie's great. Isn't he the messenger? I don't remember. I just remember yeah. he kicks somebody into he the well. He kicks him in, and as we're the he's flying back, everyone else starts ki- whatever, and then other people start falling. In. Wait, isn't it the bald guy that he kicks in? The guy that he kicks in is dark skin. Oh, I can picture his face. It's not the earringed bald guy. Okay, no, he's the I messenger. Go watch that movie again. It's like really a, good. He's like, they're mad at him. He's like, I'm just the messenger. Mm. He's, and then does he say deliver a message? I don't, I don't remember. Well, that's in Roach Perdition. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Start doing movies. He's like, <laughs> he says, so, the one guy says, like, easy, Mike. I'm just a messenger. And oh. then, like, Tom Hanks, who plays Mike Sullivan, puts the gun back down like he's not going to do anything. It's actually a good moment. And then he's like, well, give, uh, give whoever a message for me. He's like, sure, Mike. And he shoots him in the face. Mm. That's rough. The message is, I'm coming. I'm coming for you. Yeah. Damn. Well, that was my okay. that was my Brian <laughs> laundry update. Okay. No alligators, unfortunately. Maybe alligators in hell. That was Road to Perdition update. Yes, yes. Um, there was one other one that we kept talking about. What was it? Oh, well, I don't think we talked about this since it happened. I'm very upset with the whole legal system on this one, but. Kyle Rittenhouse. Oh, yeah. Across the board. Not guilty. How? How? He murdered three people. He wasn't guilty? No, two. Two. See, you don't even know your facts. Two and (laughs) shot. Shot a guy in an arm. Two. Yeah, it was two. It was the homeless guy with the bag. (sighs) Kickflip guy. And then the skateboard guy. So crazy. Well, yeah. So, didn't like... Aren't all these politicians wanting to hire him now or something ridiculous like that? For what? I know. Like, what? what's what's the guy's name on Fox? The uh, the one guy. Hey, we got a homeless guy down on the street over there. Let's hire Kyle Rittenhouse. Um, <laughs> Tucker Carlson? Tucker Carlson had this, like, interview with him. and was like, this is just a good kid. A good kid here. And he was like, can we get him an internship at Fox News? Like, swear to God. Yeah. And some other stuff. Who knows? He's, he just does shit for ratings. It's, it's, uh, I know when they ask interviewers or when they're interviewing, they ask someone a question, like there's, you know, the person's not there. So they're staring to listen, but he's always like, his, his mouth looks like a little butthole. <laughs> Do you know who I'm talking about? Like watch the next time he's, he's, he's always like, he says something like, with the eyes. The eyes are great too. It's like this, and, he, and he just listens. <laughs> well, that's just preposterous. Why would they, why would the Democrats even think that? It's like, oh, gosh, shut the <laughs> to to that uh point it's the same with every every politician or news thing yes do. it, it is. doesn't it doesn't matter what it doesn't it matter is. what size even if i agree with half the shit i'm just like this is annoying agreed i agree with that so all right so we did that update wait i have one i should say this for next time but whatever i'm gonna bring it up now let's bring it up and then we'll talk about it again um did you ever hear about the Oh, I feel like I had something to tell you. Turpin case? Turpentine? I think it's I think I'm saying it right. Turpin, it's a family. There was 13 kids and the mom. I and, just watched. I watched You watched it? The 2020? I this, the six parts of the girl. Oh, I didn't watch six parts. I only the girl watched 2020. So cute. And her I know. and her sister. And I'm like, oh my God, I feel I felt so bad for them. The whole just for people who don't know, either go watch the 2020 episode or watch whatever Jesse's talking about. It's insane. It was a family. This is 2020. 13 kids, 13 kids. And it starts out this gr- true story. This girl escapes out of her window. She calls 911 and the 911 call sounds like she's a small child, has a very 
difficult time saying with words. Vocab cadence is off. Her vocabulary. I think we the same thing. Mine was just on YouTube and it was six parts. Okay, it was probably the same thing. It was probably yeah. And um, and long story short, to sum this up, maybe we'll have to do an episode on it. But um, this mom and dad, this disgusting mom and dad. Whoa, had... whoa, whoa! The mom was hot. Are, did we watch the same thing? <laughs> Ew. Um, the now I'm all thrown off. What I was, was I joking, saying? guys. All right, <laughs> what the was I saying? The mom and dad were horrible people, or something. Yeah, he had like a bowl cut. He, ew, it was just so gross. Anyway, long story short, yeah, he had, like, a bowl cut. He, ew, so <laughs> Jesse gross. always does this every time. <laughs> we just gotta make sure we don't have any. What are you over there? <laughs> that is true. I gotta make sure it's so, loaded. <laughs> so the dad was hot. Ew, <laughs> he just looked like you tell him if he didn't pop up on Tinder. I mean, oh, definitely accidentally super liking. They were, it's so, are they all the bio, biological kids? They're all biological kids. They're all so much better looking. The parents are the ugliest people I've ever seen. Yes. The dad looks like a, not that there's anything wrong with, you know who the dad looks like? Uh, damn, I got something in my eye, man. Remember when we went to Hot Pot and you, <laughs> we went to Hot Pot and you touched your eye. That was you, Alex's fault. <laughs> You burn your eye. We went to Hot Pot, guys, and we got <laughs> half of the pot Alex, our friend, asked for hot, and the other half was just not hot, and we, me and Alex were splitting the hot side, and hot at the hot <laughs> in Chinatown is, like, like unbearable. Nobody could eat it. Not no, a single one of us could eat it out of that pot. We, I took a bite, and I looked at Alex, because he had already taken a bite, and he was pretending like it did, wasn't bothering him. <laughs> and I was like, come on, dude. I was like, this is hot. And he was like, sorry, yeah, it's a little... It was unbearable. Remember, Becky was about to try it too. We're like, no, don't. Yeah, she's like hot shit. No, who else was with us that night? Us four. It was after you guys got your vaccines. Ah, yes, 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 yes. That was it. And I feel like it was someone's birthday. Or something. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. But anyway, I touched my eye and I had to go right to the bathroom for like I had to sit in the bathroom for like five <laughs> minutes while I it was got so water bad. or tried to get water in there. It was oh. not good. Wait, back to the turbans. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so this horrible family doesn't take care of their kids, doesn't send any of them to school, doesn't teach them vocabulary, doesn't do anything. And the mom, the psychotic mom, she would buy all of this stuff, online shopping, clothes, brand new clothes, brand new toys, but wouldn't give any of them to the kids and would chain the kids up, wouldn't feed them. It was just like this prisoner of war camp for these poor children. I know. And they were all mal malnourished. Oh, I mean, some like, of them had like permanent damages. Like the one kid was course. missing an arm or a leg. Like it was just so sad. Like I usually do not watch Wait. anything involving children, but I couldn't not watch it because it was so fucking hard. And the craziest thing was um, that when she was free and she was talking to the police because they had body cam footage mm -hmm. and even on the phone, the girl was 17 and she like, they were like, do you have any injuries? And she's like, what's that? Oh yeah, she didn't know. Yeah, she knew medication too. She didn't know what medication was. And they were, did you take any pills? And she, he's, she's like, I don't think. So. Have you ever taken any pills? And she's like, I don't think so. They asked her to stand at the corner of the stop sign, and she was like, I, I don't know what that is. Yeah, like it was heart wrenching. And she did, she did keep saying, she's like, I'm sorry, this is the first time I'm out. This is the first time I talked to a stranger. Yeah. And she they must was, have thought she was like crazy. Was she 17? The yeah. one was 31 years old. The one that was next to her was like 29 or 30. Yeah. Or whatever, 31. Yeah, I think now maybe she's 31. They escaped two years ago. Yeah, I think she was 29. I think there were 17, 29. Mm -hmm. Crazy. The old, or no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think the oldest was a boy and he was 31 years old. Okay. So she might have been younger, maybe. I don't know, but it was just this terrible situation. You know what's really sad about the whole thing? I've been seeing a lot. I don't know if it's because I watched it. Now it pops up on all my like social media stuff. But um, And they said this in the end of that documentary that these children got rescued and a lot of them got put into foster care because yeah. they're unable to take care of themselves. They're not educated. They don't have social skills. So they had to go in for the foster care. And um, – some of them are like being abused now at their new places. Really? Like, yeah. Like, and the 2020 episode I saw, like they were following them around. Maybe you got Dorito dust in your eye. No, my contact. Oh, I can keep talking if you want to go look in the mirror. <laughs> Fix 
sit. I can talk to myself over here. I can just do this. All right, keep going. Okay. So, but yeah, they're like living in, they, they, a lot of them got separated, so they weren't all together. <laughs> what? It just sounds like we're trying to fill in time. I was. So, so yeah, so, so I crossed my arms and went like I this because I had to concentrate. So they all got. Um, <laughs> maybe they're still living together. Some of them could be. Who knows? But yeah, if if you're gonna donate money this holiday season, donate it to the Turpins. But make sure it goes to them. So who knows? What other updates do we have? I feel like I had one other update of a news article that I can't remember what. Oh. The school shooting thing. Yeah. And the parents went on the run. I mean, they caught the parents now. But that whole thing. You don't have to talk to people. Okay. So where was that happening at? Michigan? Yeah. It was just the whole roundabout. I texted Jesse and I was just like, when, like, after, not after it happened. Like, after it happened, it was horrible. And the situation around it was just absolutely insane. But then also, I'll be right back. These <laughs> Jesse's gonna go fix his eye. I'm gonna entertain you guys. Um, the fact that the mom texted the kid and said, "I'm not mad at you. Just try not to get caught next time." Like that's insane. Thank God. Thank God we have a legal system now where parents will get charged with this stuff because, like, that just the whole situation is just so messed up. Like, be responsible for your children and and she also knew immediately um that what am i trying to say here oh when the alert went out that an active shooter was on campus she immediately texted him and knew that it was him like how it's it just mind-boggling to me i just don't even understand um i don't really know how to feel time right now and jesse's still gone so um let's talk about becky so Becky is going to be on a little break from school. So she's probably going to come visit us at some point. Uh, for any new listeners, when you hear us talk about Becky, Becky was the third of our crew. We started this podcast with the three of us. Becky did not want to do the podcast because she knew nothing about true crime. Me and Jesse forced her to do it because we're like, it is much better dynamic with the three of us. We're hilarious together. Or maybe just in her own heads. Um, so Becky graced us with her presence for quite some time. Maybe like 25 episodes possibly. Maybe less. I don't know. Um, but yeah, but she's in school to be a doctor. And so clearly her priorities are straight. And she's doing school and not doing this podcast. Um, but she might come back to do a little guest visit with us. <clears throat> I tried to talk her into it for this week, but she couldn't do it. So she said next week she might be here. I was giving Becky updates. <laughs> <laughs> I ran out of things to talk about pretty quickly. <laughs> I got a little nervous. All right. I couldn't get back in. Um, so Wanna pivot. Should I do mine instead? Nope. I'm ready to go. Okay, let's go. Oh my god! Oh, can you imagine? Because all the description up there would have been yours, and it would have been this case. I know. <laughs> okay. All right, we better me. start. Um, Lee's got low patience. <laughs> I don't have low patience. I was very calm. Jesse was just forty-five minutes late. No, I wasn't. I he... said six fifteen. I was here at six thirty-five. No, you're here at six forty. Okay. That's. Okay, people comment, let us know. If somebody says they're going to be here at 6.15, they show up at 6.40. That's late. I didn't say it wasn't late. You just said I wasn't late. I showed up at 6.35. Well, we're like, pod, you know, we're podcasting. I have my own business. I was running a little late. <laughs> and Jesse knew I was going to be upset when he walked in. <laughs> and I didn't disappoint. All right, so... Tell me what you know about Megan Kanka. I've never even heard that name. Kanka? Mm -hmm. Local? Mm, yeah, kind of. New Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah, I got nothing. I have no idea. Did you see the Amber Alerts today? Oh, wait. The little girl in the pink jacket? Yeah. Yes. So I did see those alerts. And from my understanding, I think one whoever was in the car 
had pulled over and was going to go inside a convenience store or a pizza or something. Yeah. Pizza place or left convenience. for like two seconds and then came back out. The car was gone and the girl was gone. Okay. That's all I know. Wait, did, uh, did they find her? Yeah. She got dropped off. So whoever took her, I think she got dropped off outside of a police station. I don't a hundred percent know all the details, but it was just on in the background, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Gotcha. Um, so do you know what, why it's called an Amber alert? What's this girl's name again? Amber? No, oh. but Amber alert is from Amber Hagerman. Oh, Megan Kanka. Megan. Uh huh. Megan's law. Oh, shoot. Okay. All right. Um, God, this is already depressing. I took this from a story, so I'm like reading the, st- <laughs> the story That's that okay, someone else wrote. But um, just give him credit. So the reason the Amber Alert was going off so much this morning, mm-hmm. I it made me. I was like, I was going to do this other thing. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I was like, oh shit. And I was gonna. Then I was gonna do the Amber thing. And I was like, let's start from the beginning here with like the Megan's Law thing because yeah, it saved or helped a lot of people. So um, I thought I wanted to tell the story for those of the people that don't know it. So. Uh, the 29th of July, 1994. How old were you? I was 10 years old in 1994. Yeah, so was I. So uh, Megan was seven. So seven-year-old Megan Kanka left her house around 6.30 p.m. to play with a friend who lived on the same street. Um, Megan lived with her parents, Richard and Maureen, mm-hmm. and her 12-year-old sister and her nine-year-old brother. Uh, they didn't have any problem with like allowing her to play outside or down the street. They believe she was safe. It was a quiet suburban town in Hamilton Township, New Jersey. No, Hamilton. You do? Hamilton? Yeah. yeah, that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and they had lived in that area for like 15 years, the family. Mm-hmm. Um, so when Megan left the house, her mom, Maureen, laid down for a short rest. Uh, when she got up, she couldn't find Megan. Can you imagine um, taking a nap and your kids like gone? Fuck no. That would be the most terrifying thing in all of existence. Like not only. Yeah, no. No, thank you. I'm not doing this yet. I was going to. Go ahead. Did you get it? No, I was waiting. To get me or you? You. And I was going to go like one of these. Oh, because I was wondering why you're up there. Well, I was going to, ah. I wanted to see it there and then I'm going to do one of these. Oh, wait. Okay. Hold on, guys. I'm about to be a video. <laughs> Jesse always gets me, so I thought I'd get him. Maybe I'll start this way <laughs> and show my amazing, our amazing well, don't studio. Show that shit over there. Yeah, no, we won't show that. Okay, go ahead. Our amazing. <laughs> this is this is why I have to check YouTube. Show, show the. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start here. All see right. how there's no one over there? All right, you um, start talking okay. now. See how there's no one over there? Um, okay, so um, back to what happened to Megan Kanka. <laughs> so um, so the mom, Maureen, laid down to take a nap, and when she woke up, she couldn't find Megan. Mm. Um, she didn't return home, so she asked the neighbors if they had seen her. A number of them told Maureen that they saw her earlier that day. <laughs> oh, my God. She always does this, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, go ahead. The neighbor from across the street told Maureen he saw Megan before dinner when she and her friend Courtney stopped to talk to him about his new boat, which was on the street in front of his house. The neighbor across the street. Can you start this whole story again? I'm just kidding. What part did you not listen to? Nothing, because I was trying to do that. This is why you're better at these things than I am. So Megan went to play down the street. Okay. Her mom took a nap. Got it. Her mom woke up. Uh Uh-huh. She said, where's Megan? Shit, that is fucking horrible. All right, continue. She asked the neighbors, uh huh, and they said they hadn't seen her. But they, one of the neighbors, the one that lived across the street, said, "Oh yeah, I saw her earlier." It doesn't give a specific time now, but it will. When she came over to ask about my boat with her friend. Oh, okay. Did the mom not know that she was with a friend? She did, but they just couldn't find her. And Got she it. wasn't with the friend. Okay. Um. So Maureen called the police to report her daughter missing. The police arrived to the Kanka home a little before 9 p.m. They searched the home and the property, but there was no sign of Megan. uh, So they began began searching the neighborhood. As part of that search, they spoke with all the neighbors, and it was their it was their interaction with one neighbor in particular that gave them a break in the case. 
the man who lived across from Megan's house, 36 year old Jesse K. Timidiquis. Timid <laughs> Timidiquis. It's a horrible last name. Tim and Iquis. Tim Equis. Okay. Tim and Equis. Okay. Jesse Tim and Equis. We're just call him call him JKT. Okay. It sounds too much like B <laughs> BTK. Yeah, just something. call him Jesse. Okay, Jess, not me. <laughs> Jesse KT. <laughs> Jesse KT. Timmy. Tim and Mm-hmm. Uh, told the police that he saw Megan riding her bicycle bicycle at 2.30 that day. Police were perplexed by this. Why were police per perplexed? Because the time, there was something about the time in the boat? Well, he had said, he had told the parents, she stopped by to talk about the boat. And then he told the that police. That was the same neighbor? And then he t told <sighs> the police, I saw her on her bike. So it's oh. like, well, why didn't you tell both or one or the other? Yep. So police... <clears throat> So they were aware that they were already aware that Jesse was the neighbor who told Maureen he saw Megan just before dinner. They asked him if he saw Megan at any other time. He told police that she was riding her bicycle in front of the house between 530 and 6. So at first he said 230, mm -hmm. saw riding a bike. Mm -hmm. He made it sound like to the parents and the parents relate to the police that he saw them later at the boat. So now he was trying to combine the later time with the bicycle riding. Mm. So they asked him why he was giving conflicting accounts. Jesse lived in the house across from Megan's house with Brian, Jenna, Joseph, Safili, and Joseph's mother. Their house was just 30 yards from Megan's home. The police wanted to search the house. Joseph owned the house and he gave them permission to search it. Joseph told police that he was shopping with Brian around the time Megan disappeared and he gave them receipts to verify that. After police spoke to Brian and Joseph, wait, what did I just, no, whatever. Um, there was something about police or uh, uh, receipts that I was listening to a story. I think it was about a, was it about a case that was just happening? There's so many stories where people get caught up by receipts. But, yeah, but it was like they told someone, the, they were like, no, no, we, it couldn't have been us. Here, we were doing this. Here's the receipts. And the police were like. Oh, okay, okay. And then they checked. Oh, no, it was it was just the case I was listening to. And then they, ch like, 14 years later, mm -hmm. they realized the receipts were, like, two days before the murder. Really? Yeah, it wasn't even the time. And then, like, and then so <gasps> The whole case pivoted on that yeah, whole they, moment. Yeah, yeah. That's insane. I forget what, who it was then. That's bad police work right oh, there. Oh, horrible. Unfortunately. <laughs> All right, so anyway, um, they verified the, the receipts. The receipts were true in this case. Um, so Brian and Joseph that lived across the street were not there at the time. Okay. Um. <clears throat> they spoke to Jesse again and demo uh, noticed his demeanor somewhat was different than the other two men. So he, they talked to all three of them and realized that Jesse was acting a little different. He was shaking and perspiring heavily throughout the course of the interview. Um, police asked him to give a statement at the station, and he agreed. So Jesse Timidus, his written statement conflicted with what he told police earlier that night. He said in the statement that he saw Megan at 6.30 p.m., Police requested permission to search his car. He agreed. Police found uh, a brown toy chest and black felt in the back of his pickup truck. A toy chest? Mm-hmm. Her toy chest? You'll say. Ugh, I don't like where this is going. All right, go ahead. Police searched the boat outside Jesse's home and also the garbage cans. In the garbage, they found a rope with some knots tied to it and what appeared to be dry blood on it. They also found the waistband of a small pair of pants. Mm. They believe the pants belonged to a child. At that stage, Jesse was still being questioned at the police station, and he was asked, and he asked to speak with his roommate Brian. Brian was brought to the interview room, and Brian told Jesse, "They got you. They got you. They got you. You're going to need a friend on the outside. I'll be that friend." This that's weird to me. That's so weird. I can't tell if he's like, "They got you. They got you. They got you." So you're going to need a friend on the outside. I'll be that. Like, we're, we're friends. Like, I'll tell everyone, like, you're still a good guy. Is that yeah, what, is maybe. That I don't know. Or or he was in on it. Did he know? Like, did he, does he end up knowing? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Were they, like, best friends or something? Or, like. Like, he had nothing to do with the murder? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. So let's see. And just. So just like that, the police were listening, and they 
<laughs> what? <laughs> like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. So is it the, in the police station? Yeah. People are so. What well, year did this happen? Nineteen ninety four. Ninety four. Yeah, I guess they didn't know like how it is now. Yeah, they might not but know. Still, about I watch it all the time, and they still do it. Yeah, you're right. Like people walk out and they're like, "Fuck." Was it? Wasn't it? Durst. Um, I was just gonna say that. What was his name? What, Robert Durst. Robert Durst. What I almost said, Fred Durst. Oh, Fred Durst. What did he say? He was like, "Yeah, I did it. I killed her." Yeah, of course I killed. As he was like peeing or something. Yeah. Who wouldn't have killed? No, right. It seems, <laughs> like it's crazy. Who doesn't kill these days? <laughs> we all do. It's crazy. God, uh, people are idiots. Okay. Um. So. <clears throat> So yeah, so that so that broke that. <clears throat> so then the police were like, "Where is she?" and and he said, "She's in Mercer County Park." Uh, police hoped that Megan would still be alive, but Jesse told them that Megan was not alive; she was dead. Megan had been sexually assaulted and murdered. Jesse led police to where the body was found. Uh, he was charged with capital murder, aggravated assault, and kidnapping. At his trial, the full extent of what happened to Megan was laid bare. It was the prosecution's case that Jesse had been watching Megan for months. Mm. They knew this because Jesse told police that, listen to this, I learned my attraction to little girls was the softness of their skin. Ew. Ew. He described watching Megan for some time. I would get sweaty palms and my heart would race. I would go back into the house. Look at this piece of shit. Oh, my God. Fucked up. This is why we created Public Murder, Inc. Um, well, so one of the detectives uh, gave evidence. He read the words that <coughs> he read the words that Jesse had uh, had written down. So he said a lot of times during the summer, she would be sitting on the curb across the street. She would write with chalk in the streets. She would wear shorts with no panties. And I would see this. Ew. This guy was staring at her for months. Oh, just so uncomfortable. Like the She's whole seven. thing. It's so disgusting. Uh, the prosecutor told the court that after watching Meg for some time, Jesse eventually decided to lure her into the home. He did this by promising her she could see and play with his new puppy. When Megan went to the house, Jesse forced her into this bedroom where he attempted to sexually assault her. And at that point, Megan screamed. She tried to run away, but he stopped her. Jesse strangled Megan with his belt. And while doing so, a struggle took place and she hit her face and dresser on the head of the, her face on the dresser and her head on the floor. Megan's head was bleeding. So he put a plastic bag over her head to stop the blood getting on the carpet. During the struggle, Megan bit Jesse on the hand. The teeth mark on Jesse's hand were later identified by a forensic dentist as belonging to Megan. After Jesse struggled, Megan, uh, after Jesse strangled Megan with his belt, he sexually assaulted her. Um, and then he put her in a toy box and carried the box downstairs. Oh. Isn't, that, isn't this fucked up? It's the most <sighs> fucked up. That's why I can't ever do the cases with kids. But they need to, like, stories need to be told because people need to know this stuff because that's so. Well, and this is where Megan's Law is from. Yes. And because, I never, I never would have known this. Because, so. you know, I'm going to get to it. But basically, which we all know now is he wasn't registered. He had priors. He had priors. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Yeah, two, two or three, and he, he had been in jail. Um, so, because, like, okay, like, maybe he moved down the street, but then they're like, hey, listen, no matter what that guy, like, don't go over there or mm -hmm. whatever, or something, you know, I don't want to. Well, it's crazy, too, because I think you told me at one point, you're like, just look up Megan's Law to see who's, like, close by. Or, no, I think it was Josh before he lived, he was, like, moved, he was like, did you ever look up Megan's Law? I, 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 I might have, too, but, yeah. One of you guys said it, and then... They're like, I think, I think we were talking about it, maybe in the car down to uh, our race. And Josh was like, yeah, I did it. He's like, you don't want to pull it up in the neighborhood, Lee. And I was like, what? Like, you just, there's so many. There's so many right around her. Well, in general, there's so many around everyone. Everywhere. Thank God this law exists because, I mean, I am not a parent, but I cannot even imagine, like, being this poor little kid's parents and, like, finding like you out. you didn't know. They had no idea. Yeah. Like, no idea. So, thank God we have laws like this nowadays. You can actually go on, too, and it tells you, like, what they did and this and that and everything. Good. That's so how it should be. You can see if it's, like, vi like violent or, mm -hmm. you know, none of it's good. But, like, 
you know, you can see what's going on. I used to hear rumors. I don't know if this is true or not, that like there are uh, people too that like, now this was when I was in high school, somebody got caught like urinating in public and the cops like, you know, you can't do that or you're going to get put on Megan's law. I think it's possible, I guess. Yeah. Cause I mean, public, um, uh, what's it called? Urination. Mm, um, no, when you're exposing yourself, I guess maybe public exposing, exposing Ex of private parts. Exposition. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. Public ex exposing of privates. <laughs> Is that what I just said? Yeah. Exposing of privates. You said exposing of private parts. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know either. I'm sure I'm going to think about it. It's... But something like that. Yeah. Maybe it's like, I dude, if you're like, yeah, if you're peeing in like a kid's elementary school by a tree or even like if you're in a or school maybe three zone. strikes in a school zone or something three, three strikes you're just making up your you own laws now <laughs> hey I, it's only strike two it's your second strike buddy <laughs> one more you're going on megan's law but i do think you can get hit for like smaller uh not small you know i'm not they're all bad but like smaller like anything yep. a lot of things mm -hmm. which is good i think they're like trying to yeah not leave any uh, I's undotted or T's crossed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so he went downstairs with the box with Megan in it. He put the box in his truck. He thought he heard Megan cough. Mm. I don't know if he did or didn't. Um, Jesse got to Mercer Park. He took Megan's body out of the box and placed her body in tall weeds. At this point, he sexually assaulted her again. He then went to the convenience store and he bought cigarettes and went home. Um, the prosecutor told the court what Jesse had told police to try to explain why he had killed her. I was afraid she would tell her mother. I was afraid I would get in trouble and go to jail. Along with his confession, confession prosecution had um, had other evidence too. They presented evidence of blood and hair samples and portions of Megan's clothing that clothing that were found in garbage cans outside Jesse's home to the court. Like, what the fuck? You do something like that, and then you just throw the shit. In your trash can. And put this blood in, my blood in these underpants in this trash can. Well, because, I mean, you saw a picture of him. It was like three hours. It was like five hours later. Yeah. He doesn't look like, like it that was like smart of a guy. Six weeks later, which still would be dumb, but I don't know, whatever. Um, strands of Jesse's hair were discovered on Megan's shirt. Uh, when when they identified her body. Um, hair match matching Megan's was found in Jesse's bedroom and on a piece of carpet in his house. Um, he did a really sloppy job. Megan had become uh, a walking, talking piece of evidence. They said she knew him. She could identify him. He knew it, and he had to get rid of that threat, and so he did. Um, at Jesse's trial, the autopsy showed that Megan went through what Megan went through based on her injuries. Um, so it revealed hemorrhages in both eyes. Uh, which is a telltale sign of strangulation. Um, there was ligature marks on Megan's neck that was consistent with a leather belt found in Jesse's room. Um, she had bruising and contusions under the chin, consistent of a hand, mm -hmm. uh, blunt trauma to her eye, um, like she was struck, punched in the face, uh, bruising on her back, arms, and legs. And this was consistent of someone, you know, hold, holding her down or being on top of her. Um, the cause of death was determined as mechanical strangulation with a leather belt. Um, this would have constricted oxygen in Megan's brain, causing her, uh, causing brain death within three to four minutes. <clears throat> Here's another picture of this weirdo. He almost looks like Javier Bardeen in, uh, oh, he really does. in, uh, No Country from Old Men. But Yo, why I wonder is if his he's hair got like that? Cause he's a fucking creep. Yeah, that's so terrible. Dude, I wonder if this is where he got his look from. That's what it looks like. Dude, he literally looks like that dude. That guy's such a good actor. All right, so... Did he get the death sentence? Spoiler alert. So, no spoilers. Fuck. Okay, go ahead. A confession, a so-called confession, and admission is no different from any other evidence that would be presented to you. You will be judging the credibility of those statements. Um, That's what the defense lawyer said. So, they didn't call any witnesses. Did me too. <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> this guy's uh, dumbass. Their, their focus, their case was focused on an argument that police had managed uh, to control the confessions from Jesse. So they like tricked Jesse. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, Jesse was. He didn't good. get tricked at all. He straight up in, on recording was like, "Yeah, well, I did have, it." They don't have anything. They're trying to. So anyway, Jesse was found guilty, and the jury had to decide whether he would receive the death penalty or not. Um, the defense argued that he should not receive the death penalty because he had a troubled childhood. They told the jury that Jesse was an unwanted child. Jesus Christ! Who was beaten and raped regularly by his father, so that's why he shouldn't get the death penalty. Um, Jesse read a short statement to the jury. <laughs> so bad, Freddie. Okay. I am. So, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be laughing. But the fact that he said, okay, like almost <laughs> like it's almost like a six year old when they're like already sat on time out and they're like, okay, I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> yes. Like almost like you're just like, I don't want to sit there anymore. Yep. Can I get the fuck up? Okay. I am sorry for what I've done to Megan. I pray for her and her family every day. I have to live with this and what I've done for the rest of my life. I ask you to let me live so I someday I can understand and have understanding why something like this could happen. No. Um, I'm the all pro- for execution on this case. Yeah. The prosecution told the jury they just wanted one thing, which was justice. On behalf of the state, we do not beg, we do not plead, we do not implore, we ask for justice. And in this case, justice should be death. Yeah. The jury. Agreed. Yes. And he, was, he was sentenced to death. Um, Is he actually dead, though? Because a lot of people sit on death row for the rest of their existence. What do you think? Over, I think under. that yeah, I think that he is not dead. I think he's alive and in jail still. Because it's the early 26, 90s. 26 years? No, I don't think he's going to get out. No, no, no. It's been 26 years. You still think he's alive? I think he's alive. Okay. Um, Or he got murked in jail by somebody with a shank which hopefully happened if he didn't get lethal injection early 90s though wait early 90s no i think he's still alive go ahead so this is kind of where it gets interesting with megan's law so i mean it's it's not like a secret but so richard and maureen only discovered after megan's murder that jesse was a convicted sex offender he had already served six years in prison for aggravated assault and attempted sexual assault on another child. So he, which one? Oh, it's right here. Okay. So the first one was, so in 1981, uh, Jesse took a five-year-old girl into the woods and pulled down her pants. He, so for this, he received a suspended sentence for crime. He didn't get any jail time for that? <clears throat> I, just I don't know if he got into the microphone out of pure anger. Go ahead. No, I don't think he did actually. I don't think he got any jail time, uh, and I don't even think like when I it might have been like I was I thought it was ninety days or something. I don't think he got anything. But so in nineteen eighty two, the following year, he was found guilty of attempting to sexually assault a seven year old girl whom he choked into unconsciousness. Still not in jail. He did. He six was years sentenced for that. to ten years in prison for that crime, but was released after six. Because of good behavior. It's so, uh, I mean, like, good behavior. There's no five-year-olds, girls walking around. Mm-mm. If yeah. there was, the, he would have killed someone the next day. For sure. Good For behavior, sure. what? You don't have anything to do. Yeah. Also, you're going to be on your best behavior because people in the prison system don't like, the, you know, they. he's probably over there, like, doing all kinds of stuff, making deals with guys just to not get beat up. Well, yeah, he probably was in his own little, like, pod and stuff, too, because aren't any um, child predators, like, easily, tar- like, rightfully so, targeted because they're the most fucked up in the low, like... Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, so Jesse moves, obviously, across the street um, from... Oh, so he, I forgot about this. He moved across the street. Those other guys, they were all sex offenders. Are you kidding? No. That's why that guy said that. I had a feeling he knew. So that guy probably knew what happened. So they moved. So it doesn't say that, but you're probably right. Um, So they all met while they were incarcerated. Are you kidding me? So they all met and they went back and Joe's mom had a house and was probably like, you guys can live here. So all three of them live there. They were probably all talking about Megan or other people, kids on the block. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And it was probably more like a, 
a badge to you know what i mean like to one of them like mm-hmm. who was gonna get one of these one of the pe- kids first or something i don't who fucking knows these fucking weirdos so um so the parents were outraged um so they wanted a law richard and marine wanted a law that would give the parents the right to know a law that would require notification when a convicted sex offender moves into a neighborhood. Over 400,000 citizens signed a petition demanding immediate legislative I just got legislative action mm. on the law that had had to be written. So it was like almost immediate, like overnight they signed this, they signed this, made this into a law um, and Bill Clinton signed it. Thank God. Um, I don't know the exact timing of everything and uh the family was there and uh john walsh Mm -hmm. america's most wanted yep um i think it was within three months but i don't that's really quick oh it's right here just just in 89 days sorry because it (laughs) it was written out numbers i didn't in just 89 days the new jersey state legislator passed megan's law um jesse remained on New Jersey's death row until the 17th of December, 2007. They killed him? When the New Jersey legislator abolished the state's death penalty. <laughs> oh, my God. Roller coaster. <laughs> of course they abolished the death penalty. It needs to come back. I know. Um, so he got life instead. Isn't that it's fucked up? So fucked up. Yeah. It's so It shouldn't over... Change, okay, changing something like that, okay, people voted on it. But it shouldn't change the fact that this man was given life. The people that – or the people that were already given the penalty. Yeah, they should continue to get it. That's why there is – um, what are all those things where you can appeal? There's appeals for that. Yeah. So if somebody really – because there are a lot of innocent people who have gotten off death row who were wrongfully convicted. But a situation like this piece of shit should be dead right now. I know. You know who just got their – so he's in he's in life without a possibility of parole. So he can't get out. Yeah, still sucks. Should still be. sucks. Um, who got what? Their uh, life or their death sentence overturned just happened like today. Scott Peterson. Mm-hmm. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Was that popping up somewhere? Prior? Yeah, it was popping up. Okay. I had just heard it today because of the news. Uh, but then on my know. Instagram, it popped up. I don't know. You knew? Oh, I don't know either because that Yo, documentary that came out. I watched the one out. documentary and I was like, whoa. I None of that stuff I knew. Well, I didn't. And who knows? It's supposed to make us think that. But uh, I didn't know any of that stuff. I didn't know any of it. It made me seriously question a lot of things. I'll tell you what. When when I put it on, I was like, all right, whatever. I was like, he definitely is guilty. And then yeah. I watched it. And I was like, oh, my God. He's, he's definitely innocent. <laughs> yeah, but it's like a roller coaster. I thought the same thing. I was like, I was this like, guy. This he guy. needs a new lawyer. That whole thing was so crazy. But definitely he was, a roller coaster. He was a dirt bag. And also then he was acting really weird if he didn't. So that's, it's, he really shot himself in the foot there. He absolutely did. The running, the fleeing, the Whether dying his Whether he did hair. it or didn't do it. Yeah. Like the whole thing well, he with said the he girlfriend. Died his- it's kind of, conv- it's kind of weird. The one thing I don't get. He told the mistress a week before Lacey died that his girlfriend was dead or his wife was dead. That's the only thing that's weird to me. He did? It was like a couple weeks before he was like. I didn't know that. She had not gone missing yet. And he had already said something. That's the only thing that. Was she dead? She she wasn't dead yet. I don't think she was dead yet. I don't think that she was missing yet or anything. Was he saying that to ham up like a. Because he wanted to, I think he got like, you know what? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I, I don't remember. But like, I just remember that was the one piece of evidence where I was just like, I don't know. Well, that's that's the big trial with Nancy Grace, too. Wait, what's that going on with Nancy Grace? My girl? That was like um, trial by media. Oh, yeah. Nancy because Grace Nancy Grace like up. came onto the scene and was like, like, hammed it up. Like, everything was like, fuck Scott Peterson. Yeah. And like. And I'm not saying she is right or wrong or wrong, but uh, but she that was like her big. Yeah, she has strong opinions on things. And moment. if she thinks that you're guilty or not guilty, you're who was it? Um, the, the making a murderer. I remember right when that came out, I was listening to Nancy Grace's podcast a lot. And she was like, I can't believe they made this documentary. That man is so guilty, like on and on and on. And I was like, I'm not going to watch to make a murderer because it was trying to make it sound like he was innocent. And I was like, that guy definitely did it from hearing her side of the things. Well, that's yeah. I've never lit. I've never watched to make a murderer though. It's good. Do you think that he did it? No. 
Interesting. Now I have to watch it. I think um, Nancy Grace did it. Ooh. Bitch. Wicked. Um, well, she that's her thing, though. I'm not saying she... She could be right 99% of the time. I'm just saying that's her, is to that's everybody's thing. Yeah. That's Tucker Carlson's thing. That's Yep. Fucking John Stewart's thing. Well, and, and these guys, these you media just pick guys. You decide and yep. you go 100% even if you whatever. Even if you're wrong. Yeah. I know I know some sports writers in the city and uh they even said they're like sometimes we don't even believe what we're saying but we just have to p- play the other side because oh. blah 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 is playing this side. Interesting. It's just for us to talk about and then watch and then money. Yep, that's true. I'm so happy you told that story. I had no idea about Megan's law like that. Yeah. That's wild. I know it's a shame. God that they have that law. Like I literally had goosebumps everywhere because like thank God that that was passed as quickly as it was. And I'm sorry it took so long for it to happen, but a couple people I know from school were on that. On my... What? Mm-hmm. That you went to high school with? <coughs> high school, grade school. I know one person from high school who there was like this crazy arrest that happened after high school that's on there. And they might still be in jail. They might still the be two, in jail. The two people I know, it's not it's not accidentally peeing on a... Really? It's in, like something happened. Two bad ones. Ugh, like, so many two, two bad ones. Like the, wor- like the worst. Really? Are they in jail still or they're just still on Megan's law? Uh, the one might be. The one was pretty bad. You have to tell me off the air. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So that law, I mean, changed a lot of things and helped a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I don't even have any kids. I look it up all the time. Mm. Yeah, because you wouldn't know. Yeah. Heck yeah. If anything happens, boom. Yep, boom. Anything happens on my block, I run right to that house. Yep, you know. <laughs> Apocalypse happens, just go there and preempt. Officer, I shot him. That's not, Carl moved out years ago. <laughs> That's Larry. That's Larry. He owns the hardware store. <laughs> the end of the block. <laughs> oh, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop trying to help us. <laughs> You're not helping. I'm just You're walking around shooting people. <laughs> I'm a serial killer somehow. Mm, speaking of, Dexter's back on the air. I haven't seen it. It's, it's Dexter. You know, it's just, you know. Some people have mixed opinions. It's entertaining. I'm entertained by it. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it. Are we signing off? I don't remember what our sign offs are. Signing off. Peace. That's it. And then we sit awkwardly for a while. So, who's going to get up? I think I did it last time. You didn't. And there's video proof of it. I totally did it last time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I do it? That's exactly what happened. And then I did it. Good job. That was a good one.